Now, what does Faraday's law tell us? Okay, so what, did, what does it tell us? It tells us EMF is minus d phi by dt. Now, usually I don't calculate the minus. I don't really care too much about the minus because we use Lenz's law to calculate what the actual direction of the EMF is. But this is what Faraday's law is telling us, right? And you already know that there are two major ways in which this can happen. One is what we call motional EMF. And in the previous problem, we saw how that combined motion and that combined with the changing magnetic field. But there are really two different ways this happens. One is where there is a change in the magnetic field and one when there is um, motion of a conducting, let us say, rod or a um, loop or whatever, right? So, if you look at this, this is nothing but magnetism. So, the mechanism, so this is telling us the formula. It is telling you how to calculate the EMF in a loop. But why is there this EMF? Well, that is basically QV cross B. It is magnetism and so this force is what is driving the charges. So, force by charge, force per unit charge is V cross B and that is why we get V cross B dot L and so on, right? So, what is driving the charges around magnetic force? But what is driving the charge here? I know that it is d phi by dt, there is an EMF, so there is therefore currents being run. But if you take a loop, so suppose I would say here is a loop and then here the magnetic field is changing. So, if the magnetic field is changing and there was a charge sitting there, why should this charge go around? What is making this charge go around? We know the formula tells us that there is charge going around. Why? Because there is an EMF. So, EMF by R is going to be the current. So, all that is fine. But why does it go around? What is the mechanism behind it? So, the mechanism behind this is that a changing B induces, it produces a, an electric field. We have been using this idea quite a bit, but basically changing B induces a different kind of an electro, not an electrostatic field, but an electric field. And an electric field, for example, in this case, there is an electric field, let us say, in this direction, not necessarily tangential, but is there a component of the electric field in this direction along the wire? Yes. So, therefore, the wire, this charge, let us say it was a positive charge, it is going to start moving like this. Actually, it will be a negative charge, it will start moving like that, but it does not matter really. But if I assume that the electric field was like this, now that electric field is going to make it go around. And if you come to this point, and let us say the electric field here was in this direction, you still will have a component like this. And so this charge goes round, 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 round and comes back. Actually, if you try to do integral E dot dl, that is the work done per unit charge by this electric field through this entire closed loop. So you start at let us say point A and you go around and you come back to point A, that will be the EMF. Okay. So the mechanism is you have this EMF because there is an induced electric field. So magnetic fields changing, changing magnetic fields produce an induced electric field. Okay, produce an electric field, induces an electric field. So, this is a new kind of field. These fields are all going in loops. So, if you try to draw the field lines, you will say that this electric field line is going like that. This is the field line, E field line. You would have never got this kind of a case with electrostatics because in electrostatics, the field lines would go like this or they would go off to infinity. There is no case where it loops back on itself. In fact, that is one fundamental idea in electrostatics. We write integral E s, just to say electrostatics, E dot d l, this integral for a closed loop we claim is 0, right? This was in fact the foundation of Kirchhoff voltage law. In fact, this is the foundation of potential. It tells you that electric field is a conservative field and so that means you can talk about potential. Now, this is not a conservative field, clearly. This is doing work when you go around in a loop. It is a different kind of electric field. So, sometimes people talk about non-electrostatic field plus electrostatic field gives me the overall electric field. 
and sometimes people say no 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 let us not worry about these two because these two behave the same way this is q into e this is q into e the charge feels a force of q into e it affects the charge the same way therefore we don't call it a different field we could have we could have called that an electric field we could have called this some other field okay but instead of dealing with one more field we just combine it as part of the electric field it is just that now the electric field is no longer a conservative field this is the combination if you feel like you can separate it out and say this is the source of these are charges which are static charges source of an electric field these are changing magnetic fields which are the source of the electric field anyway now the problem is sometimes i want to find out what this electric field is let us think about a question where you might need it let us take this example so here i have let us say a disk with some charge so this has charge sigma distributed all over the disk okay now imagine that i had a magnetic field going this way and suddenly i switch off the magnetic field what has happened because i had the magnetic field switched off it is going to produce an electric field now if it produces an electric field let us say which way should the current flow well if i want the continuation of the field this way i have switched it off earlier the field was let us say like this and now the field is gone i want the field to continue lenz's law which means i want the field like that which means i must have a current like this how will you have a current like this because you are going to have an electric field like this now this electric field is going to suppose this was just a conducting rod you can just have the charges moving around i mean charges inside a conductor moving around but this is a insulating let us say disk with sigma so actually if you had an electric field what is it going to do to this sigma it is going to push this sigma and if this whole thing was free to rotate this will start rotating with an angular acceleration and by the time i switch off the entire field it is going to end up with a angular velocity omega final and the question can be what is the angular velocity in fact we will do questions of this kind but before we can even do something like this i need to know how to calculate the electric field why because the electric field is the one that is going to decide how much is the force so first from the emf i should be able to calculate electric field from the electric field i should be able to calculate force and from the force i should be able to calculate torque from torque i will be able to calculate either alpha or i'll be able to calculate omega correct i'm not talking about this completing the loop but basic idea is why is this changing why is this being produced because there was a flux change why was there a flux change because there was a b change so starting from b we should be able to get to omega let us think about some one case at least where we can calculate it and see now it's very difficult to do this for all possible questions okay but we can do this for some of the cases in fact we'll only do it for one kind of case and the case is when the b field is symmetrically distributed so imagine the case where b was symmetrically distributed let's say it was inside a loop like this okay everywhere i have a magnetic field b in fact right now let me make sure that the magnetic field is uniform throughout okay so now if i take this loop let us say this was radius r right so what is the flux through this b into this area pi r square correct now if i look at b changing so the b is like this pointing in but b is uniform and it's only inside this disk so that means you can you know that it is basically centered around this and that is where the b field is now when b basically goes to zero which means there is an emf in this loop right how much will the emf be d5 by dt pi r square db by dt i know this emf must be equal to integral e dot dl but what is e let's think about what is e now because it is symmetric i can kind of conclude that well if b is going to let's say become zero i'm going to have a current in this direction if b is going to increase so in this case i'm going to assume b is increasing i'm going to have a current in that direction okay so i should have actually put a minus d5 by dt right 
assuming that was the area, but I don't really particularly care because I'm going to use Lenz's law. So if I put this as the EMF, I'm now going to claim that B is increasing and I'm going to claim that therefore E must be in this direction. Now given that it is symmetric, can we make the assumption that everywhere here B is constant? I'm not saying the B here is the same as the B there. But I'm just saying that the B in this circle everywhere has the same magnitude throughout here. It is not the same magnitude as the B there. But is the, sorry, as the E there. So is the E here equal to the E here? By just looking at the symmetry of the situation, we should say yes. I mean, look at space around. There is nothing that is going to make this little bit better than that. Why is this the direction? Because we are going to say that that is the direction in which you must have it. This direction, that direction depends on whether B is increasing or not. But the fact that the magnitude is E, magnitude is E here, magnitude is E here, should be something that we can get out of symmetry. Now if we make that assumption, then we can conclude that E into 2 pi r must be EMF. So we can then write this is E into 2 pi r. So from this what can I conclude? I can say E and don't please don't remember it as a formula. I'm just telling you what to do for this particular case. So E divided by the 2 pi, the pi pi will cancel out, r will cancel out, gives us r by 2 db by dt. If you notice, in this case, I have assumed b to be constant. What if b was not constant? Well, if b was randomly distributed from place to place, then obviously we are not going to be able to find out what is e this way because we can't use symmetry. But suppose B was symmetric in the sense that it was always circularly symmetric. It was, it depended on this distance, but it did not vary from point to point on that circle. Then we can still use symmetry, except we can't do it like this. We'll have to say integral B dot dA. Okay. We can find the electric field at this point. We can find the electric field here. We can find the electric field there using the same kind of idea. I don't want you to remember this as a formula, but do think about how we approached it and solved it, right?